this rivalry with Sammy Swindell, was that in part manufactured to sell tickets or did you guys have a real rival? Did you like one another or did you butt heads? It wasn't to sell tickets, I can tell you that. <laughs> oh, it wasn't? Okay. No, I didn't really care how many tickets, how many people was on the grandstand. Understood. I was out there to win a race. I got you. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I wasn't one of those guys that could tell you whatever, what position of purse drop from one spot to the other or whatever, but. Uh, well, you won so much, you didn't need to know. I, I was in a good air of a sprint car racing because we was pay started paying, some, you know, Earl started paying 10000 and yeah. we started having 20000 to win races and then 50000 to win races. Uh, our motors wasn't no $60,000 like they yeah. are today. I don't yeah. know how anybody can continue racing I don't at get that it pace and, uh, and have your motors on kill all the time. So, But I was in a good air and, and it was very fortunate to be able to, to make a living doing it. Did you guys get along all right? I mean, you and Sammy, uh, or were you? We got along a little bit. When you were competing. I mean, I know you get along now, but back then. We, you know, we didn't talk to each other a whole lot. You know what I mean? We were rivals. We, you know, he was, he was one of my tougher guys to outrun, you know what I mean? Was, I hear you. Uh, I mean, we, like, me and Doug Wolfgang, we never had, we, we'd talk and sort of, you race people like you get raced, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so, yeah. I guess that's the way me and Sammy. Who was decided, your... I guess that's the reason me and Sammy decided to race each other, each other that way. You know, I probably would, I would lean on Sammy more than probably anybody else on the racetrack, to be honest with you. Hmm. And he would do the same to me. Was he your toughest competition from that era? Oh, I mean, I'd say from uh, from uh, yeah, from the whole time I ran, he would by far be the toughest. Yeah. yeah okay. I mean, Doug. You know, Doug was on the pavement when he got burned and stuff, and and, and sort of had to get out of out sure, of the race and sure. part of it. So it was, it was you guys were running on pavement that day. I didn't get that. Yeah, we was at Kansas City. There was a pavement track, and and uh, I don't know. Uh, had something happen. He got into the wall when it did. It sort of. Well, that's when they started putting the fuel pump fuel pumps on the back. On the when it did knock the motor forward, got fuel in the cockpit, and they actually did not have no rescue stuff there. It was just sort of a trial run. We had wing cars on the pavement, so it didn't go very good that day. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. When you think back, can you pick out one race that was your greatest race ever that you were most proud of because you started in the back or whatever? I mean, there were so many. I don't know how you choose, but is there one that comes to mind? Oh, I don't know. Back, back when we first started, most of my races, the bigger races that I won without wings was always big races to me because because I was a non-wing racer and it's just sort of the way I all I'd seen growing up. Uh, you know, it was a fun day. That day I come from the back of, of Eldor both times. With the, it was a dirt car and a sprint car. And, uh, uh, that was a great day. And there's been a few other times at uh, Williams Grove once we had to go. It was halfway through the race and uh, somebody walked in a out on the track, they penalized me, put me to the tail when we still won the race. So I was blessed to have a lot of good nights and yeah. a lot of good races. Yeah, you sure were. And I know you, the Williams Grove fans, I mean, you probably weren't the favorite when you go to Williams Grove, were you? I mean, they had no, their no, I mean, I, 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 I was not the favorite, but over the years I did become to have a lot of fans out there. That's cool. I like that story. Well, is it, is it harder to drive a sprint car with or without a wing? Does it matter? I, I mean, I know you got to drive them different, but well, is one harder than I the other? No, they run these, these run the non-wing cars pretty hard anymore and I stuff. Know. Uh, 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 you know, it was sort of you sort of had to take what you got a little bit. Uh, our 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 cars were pretty high centered, and you know, back in we didn't have all the offsets in the wing the tires and and things they do now, and and, and or, or didn't do it. Let's put it that way. So we'd have to take it a little bit easier with our car maybe qualifying and it's just right. And then once the track sort of blew off, we was, we was always right in the hunt. Did you have a favorite track or it was just the next one I'm going to is my favorite track? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I had a favorite. I always enjoy running Eldor yeah. uh, as, as much as it Maybe because it was close to home, but uh, uh, you know, it's sort of where some of the bigger purses started paying. It didn't pay a whole lot. It, Earl never did pay a whole lot. He liked putting the money on the top, and <laughs> I was fortunate enough to, to, to spend a, a lot of time there. To win a lot on the top, it, it had definitely always had a big drop. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, quickly, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, 
it was it was a fun track to race on. Did you get nervous? Were you a nervous racer? Were you nervous when you climbed in that car? Or did you eventually get over that? I mean, did you ever fear for your life as much as you did this? Never ever? feared for my life uh, uh, ever. I, I mean, I mean, I might have not at the racetrack. I didn't. I got nervous because I wouldn't even smoke when we left. We leave the track. I did a little bit, but. As soon as I pull on the gate, I still do it to this day. I'll go and not smoke, not smoke, not smoke, and pull on the racetrack. First person, either I get to stop and buy cigarettes before I go, even if I go watch Craig. It don't even matter if, if Craig's not there racing, if I go watch You race. still get nervous. I, when I get around a race car, I, I just want to get antsy and stuff. In them. But I was always, it didn't bother me. I wasn't ever nervous to get in a car or not. I, just something about the atmosphere of the racetrack just sort of got me all hyped up all the time. Yeah. Understood, understood. How, how hard was it to retire for you when you climbed out of the, I mean, did you know that night you retired wherever it was that that, when you were climbing out, that was it? Or did that decision come later? No, I knew, I pretty well knew when I decided to quit, I was, I was gonna quit. You know, it, it sort of, all at once, I just sort of got to thinking about it. Uh, as everything got to be a little more expensive and things like that. Uh, I wasn't getting quite enough sponsorship to, to keep everything going right and so once I started driving you know I want to drive Tony want me to drive for him one year and I told him I would do that and and because um, I because I, I told him I was going to run a whole lot longer and stuff so uh other than that uh, when I quit uh but was know, it I, hard? I, it started hurting a little bit I, yeah. I had pretty good a couple pretty good tumbles where I could tell it was uh where before it probably wouldn't have hurt me much. I was gaining a little more weight and I don't know. They started coming in with the, you know, a lot of all the more of a spec racing and stuff and things like that, and this seemed like the time to get out. And, and was it I hard? Was it a difficult moment for you, though? I mean, no, it really wasn't. No? I, I, you know, I I enjoyed. I, I sort of enjoyed. Uh, I, I haven't lived in Bloomington. I was born in Bloomington, but I haven't lived here. You know, right. I, I was <laughs> of high course. school, and after that, I, yeah, I've been out of here, and so. Uh, you know, I know sometimes it's hard to enjoy the, sort of the the way everything's going in the, or life, everybody's lifestyle right now. But I still, uh, it's it's hard for me to go racing uh, to the races a little bit. I still go, but to, I, I don't mind just sitting at home to you. Do you get the urge to get back in? I mean, do you ever even uh, think about that? I would do it all over again. <laughs> really? No, I don't have the urge to get back in. You do not? No. Like when you go to the track, you, it's hard to watch because you want to drive. You don't have that. Well, I would, I, yeah, I'd want to drive every time I come through the gate. Okay. I must still have the same feelings every time I come because I do the same. That thing nervous routine. feeling. I still do the same routine. Yeah. Do you remember that car, Big Bertha? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It oh, yeah. was an iconic race car in its yes, day. Yes, it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did a feature on yeah, that. It was really that. neat. Just um, about everybody that was in and out of it. Yeah. And all the stuff I did, I can remember it just like it was yesterday. Good memories, huh? Yes, it was good memories. Yeah. It was good memories going to all the racetracks around here. I, I, I didn't want to get left you, out. I wanted yeah. to get the racetrack. Understood. You, you've had an amazing life. You know, I look at sprint car racing today, everyone's got the same bold on parts. Are we lacking in innovation? Because in your day, Carl Kinzer could innovate his way to victory lane. That's not happening as much today, is that? What's wrong with sprint car racing? Or? Well, I mean, it's still a, it, 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 uh, you gotta have special people behind you as a race driver, even though you can still buy your, most of your equipment now if you got enough finances where you don't have to build it with weight rules and the spec tires and everything else. It takes a lot of it away, but you still gotta have that special person you gotta work with and have that relationship to make, a, to, to, to make everything go right. And, uh, uh, it's, it's, so it takes a special driver and it takes somebody, the, the special crew chief and stuff and special team to be right there to be a part of it. Yeah, that part's still it's, the same. It's, it's, to me, you know, the good old days is when you could come in and, and uh, you had three, two or three tar companies in there to compete with and get a little help. Everybody could get a little help, whether it be uh, Hoosier, uh, Firestone, Goodyear would have the drag tars and stuff. So they but it's all a little bit of part of it. And then you know, I think McClary and the whatever, the whatever all. So everybody was running tars. So that helped everybody in its budget just a little bit. And it wasn't as exp expensive to race. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different era and it's not going to change back. You know, it's, it's, no. it's, it's here to stay. So sure. 
you still got to get a good race team and get people to want to work, and uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Understood. How, how long have you been married? Do you, oh, well, oh you my. shouldn't ask that. Oh, question. God. I, I knew I shouldn't have went there. <laughs> I got married. I can in, edit it. I got married in uh, <laughs> uh, 82. 82? Yes, we just wow. Out. <laughs> wow. Good, good job, Steve. Um, wh where did you meet Dana? I had met Dana. I'd seen Dana around the racing quite a bit. Because uh, her family were, or she comes from a family well, of racers. Yeah, I was, with the, when I was driving Vance's cars, those two cars I started on back, Jim McQueen was her stepdad and was uh -huh. taking care of those cars. So I drove, I drove uh, Johnny's cars and then I drove uh, for Jim a few times at uh, Terre Haute too uh, on some off nights. And uh, actually the first time I probably First time I probably started talking to Dana was that tarot, I think. And then, and then I just sort of asked her out, and she went to college at uh, Indiana State uh, on a track scholarship. So as we started dating, there was a lot of trips back and forth to Terre Haute. Stuff, yeah. And we got married, and that was it. She loved racing as much as I did, if not more. That helps, that helps. That's 40 years, I think, marriage or somewhere in there. Though. Somewhere in there, yeah. If we do the add and subtract and all that jazz. Well, how do you how do you fill your days these days? What do you do all day? I, I get a little lazy in the wintertime. Do you? I, I got plenty to do right now in the summertime. I keep myself pretty busy. Uh, I got plenty to do. I got a lot of grass I need and bush hogging and different things. Bush hogging. So I just... I can find, I got enough stuff, I can find stuff to do. I got gotcha. you. Are you an early riser? You get up early or you sleep in or whatever? I never was. I am now. Oh, you are now? No, okay. I, can sleep, I can sleep from Indiana to California and back that truck. <laughs> <laughs> back in my early days. But oh, no, that's I'm good. A, I, I'm a pretty well, uh, I'm pretty well turned into uh, when it's daylight, it's time to get up. And when it's dark, it's almost time to go to bed. <laughs> did, did you watch the Daytona 500? Yes. You did? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you ever just kick back and watch television, like put your feet up and can you sit still that long? Or I got certain things I watch. What do you watch? Oh, you don't want to know. I do want to know, most like the Rifleman or most what? Most of it's old shows. It's I old, know. That's, it's just older shows. It's name good. one. Huh? Give me one. Oh, just like, I still like watching the uh, Rockford Files just because I... Just, Rockford Files? Yeah, I know. Well, I run around with James Garner a little bit, so he was a hero of mine anyway. Sure, so, sure. So, uh, well, I've seen them all, but, and, yeah. you know, but I still, if I'm getting bored, I flip them on. I don't have to worry about falling asleep in the middle. I know what's <laughs> happening and stuff. There's just different things, but most of it's... Uh, what about Columbo? Uh, I watch Columbo. I, you, watch, I, I, I watch, Columbo. I watch all the old shows. Oh, right? my God. I watch... Columbo. It just depends on what's on. What's Have you ever been to the uh, watch the movie? There's. I went before coming here. I went down to the square, the Bloomington Square, mm -hmm. the, the courthouse square. Mm -hmm. There's a little theater called the Indiana. Mm -hmm. You ever see a movie there? I think I was in that theater one time. One, one time. That's time. it. Mm -hmm. Wow. You, yeah. It's been there. It's been there. Was, it was there when I was growing up as you, a kid. Do you have a favorite movie? Over the years that you oh, liked a no, lot? No, not really. No, okay. Was, That's okay I if you was, don't. That's all I thought about from the time I could walk is the race car. Yeah, well, I don't even know why I asked that question. <laughs> uh, Steve Kinzer is not going to stop too long to watch a movie. Favorite food? All of it. All of it. <laughs> That's <laughs> just, a bad problem. <laughs> just, just put it in front of you? Well, I had to starve all through wrestling and stuff. So oh, my God, yeah, I, so you I, had to make up I, for I, it. Yeah, uh, so food is sort of a luxury, but it's getting it's getting a little harder as I yeah. get older and stuff. You're what, 60? Continue eating all your life. You're, you're 67 now? Yes. Yeah, I t I, honestly, Steve, to me, you look really good. You look youthful. You look like you could still get in that sprint car and dust off Sammy Swindell of Eldora, but you look good to me. You well, do. if I could see where I was going, I'd be all right. Yeah, okay. My sight's not as good as it used to be. Oh, wow. Well, other, okay. other than that, I could sit in a little bit, but I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't be able to get to the refrigerator quite as much as I do now. But anyway, <laughs> so I do work. I do try to watch it, but I'm still 30, 40 pounds if, overweight, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I think you look great. Uh, if you're going to eat a steak, is it medium rare or well done? Uh, it's uh, medium. Medium, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, okay. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you listen to music? Do you care? I love music. I do don't you? listen to a lot, but I love, when I do listen to it, I love it. Is it country music? or? I like just a little bit of everything. Okay, well that pretty, pretty roundabout. I can I can listen to. You gotta be a classic rock guy. Yeah, I am. Mean, I mean, yeah, I mean Led Zeppelin. 
Yeah. Led Zeppelin's all right, but uh, I'm more of a, uh, I don't know. That's awful. My mind's went blank. <laughs> That's okay. That I'll tell you what. <laughs> so, no, <laughs> that was a cool moment. I like that. <laughs> uh, do you know John Mellencamp? Uh, I mean, I've known John and have been around. I was actually around him as first drummer more than I was him. We was a good friend, so. But you know John. I met John three or four times. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, no, I don't run around with him personally. I got you. You like his music? Yes, I do like his music. I love his music. Mm -hmm. It's, it sounds, when I hear John Mellencamp music, it reminds me of small town America and middle America. He no, just that's, nailed it. That's, that's what he's all about. And that's where he still is, here in Bloomington. Um, have you ever seen him in concert? I've never been, I was, I was always at a racetrack. I, I don't have a chance to go to a concert. Why do I ask those dumb questions? <laughs> Has he ever seen you race, do you know? I, I don't think John's a, a, a big of a race fan, so I doubt he has, but I, I, I don't know. But he is on record as saying Bloomington, Indiana will be forever known for John Mellencamp and Steve Kinzer. So he's he's well aware of your territory here. Well, I mean, I met, the first time I met John was we played golf with him here, which, like I said, was with Larry Crane, Crane a boy, a, you know, a guy, a boy he grew up with in Seymour, Indiana. Yeah, And yeah. Then they started playing music yeah. together. And so so I'd met him quite some time ago. And, that, uh, and then I'd see him occasionally at the Malibu Grill uptown, but we're, Everybody's got their space. Nobody at the knows. where? Malibu? Uh, yeah, uptown. Uh, is that in the square? Eat, huh? Is that in the town square? That yeah, restaurant right in Malibu? Off, just right off the uh, east side of the town square. That's where you like to go eat when you go out? Oh, I enjoy going there. I got a good friend that I enjoys it a lot more than me, but he makes me go with him. And yeah. I don't mind it. He's a good, I like his company. So. And you've seen John Mellencamp there before? Yeah, he's been there a few times. I, yeah. I don't talk to him. I mean, it's, it's, you don't know who you're going well, to Well, he must know who you are, for crying out loud. Oh, well, I mean, Obviously I, well, I can't him. tell you that. Well, our acquaintance <laughs> has only been small and short time. Yeah. I'm okay. sure he's aware. Do you, have you, do you eat at the Brick? Yeah, I've been there. Okay. Not for been a long time. All right, all right. I guess he's told you how he got the name Seaman Head, hasn't he? You know, he told me about it, but I don't know how it happened. I think he was doing a motorcycle thing. He was going to... No, it was on a hood of a car. Oh, he was on the hood of a car blasting through the fire. Yeah. Yeah, he was doing his daredevil stuff. So you're, you're cement head, Alan, yeah, right? Yeah, no, he's not. He's Maverick. He's Maverick. He's Maverick. He yeah. cement head. <laughs> There's a story behind that, too. Uh, can you, can you clear it in yeah, 30 seconds? I gamble a lot. And uh, anyway, back, <laughs> way back, I'm talking back, back in the 50s, there was a pool hall there in Columbus, and they played cards, poker in the back room. And I'd go in there once in a while and play poker. Well, I went in there one day and, and uh, went broke. <laughs> and so I had a brand new watch that my wife had bought me for Christmas. So I hocked it. And of course, lost that real quick too. And so I went home and instead of going to my house, I went to my neighbor's house. And uh, he was a good friend of mine. His name was Jim Hill. I said, Jim, I need to borrow $10. He said, what for? And I said, well, I hocked my watch. I need to go get it at poker game. Oh, so he gave me $10 and I went and got it. And from then on, he called me Maverick. Maverick. Yeah. Oh, uh, and it stuck. That, that's rough times when you start hocking your watch <laughs> for 10 bucks, for Christ's sakes. That's when Maverick showed. The Maverick oh, I got it. It was got it. popular. Okay, in the gotcha. I missed that, sorry. I heard from Alan on this. Is Kyle Larson the, the best driver in America today? 